everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Ag Next podcast, where we're always excited to tell you about what's next from Ag Next. Um, this this afternoon, we have um, our second listener's choice episode, which is exciting. So thanks to everybody who had a chance to vote online. Um, so today, we're going to be chatting with Dr. Diego Manriquez, a, a dairy system specialist here at Ag Next. Let's get into it. Welcome back, uh, Diego, to our podcast. Uh, yeah, as Eric said, this is a listener choice. So, Diego, uh, the the choice of of this month is understanding indoor uh, quality in, in dairy barns. So, can you tell us a little bit a little bit more about air quality and how did you get involved in in doing research and investigating more in this area? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me again. Uh, this is really exciting. Uh, research we are doing because we are learning a lot and that's a great question uh, but first of all I like to give some context about what air quality is actually mm -hmm. what what is in the air you know and what what why air is important and why it's important to study air yeah it's a so, great starting place yes I love it. <laughs> good, good. yeah I like to think that air is our media is where we are immersed it's like for example if you think about fish when you have a fish in a fish tank Mm -hmm. Water is the media. So when the water is not so good quality, for example, the color is changing. If you are, if you have not changed the filter, for example, the water is going to change. If you are add more fish to the water, that's going to affect the media. So the same happened with the air. Mm -hmm. But we don't see the air or the components that are in the in the air, you know. And there are all kinds of components. There is microbes, there are chemicals, there are gases, there are physical components that are also important. For example, temperature, humidity, solar radiation that mm -hmm. in some extent could affect our health and the health of animals and the environment. Do you, sorry, I'm maybe asking a question too soon. In, in those calculations, do you also consider things like wind speed or like if there's air movement within the barn? Yes, yes. Yes, we, we are doing those uh, measurements. Uh, we have equipment installed to, to measure that because, you know, as barns are some sort of enclosed uh, environment, mm -hmm, depending mm -hmm. on the operation, we need to know how much air is flowing to be able to air calculate yeah, okay. the air emission flow. rates. Yeah, that's uh, something we do. That's, that's awesome. pretty cool. So like this, I really like the analogy with, with the media and the, the water tank with fish. And is this something that using like your background is as a veterinarian and as a welfare specialist, is this, is this an area of research that you start to think about because of that, thinking the well-being of the animals and other things, that, yeah. humans as well? Mm -hmm. You know, I have always been fascinated uh, for health and studying not only the determinant of disease, but the determinant of good health. And I like to use the, the concept of the epidemiological triangle which mm. includes, you know, the host, what is, are the characteristics of the animals, of the humans, the environment, and the causing agents or the pathogen. And that could only apply to infectious diseases, but now we know that actually microbes uh, play a big role in the health of animals. So that's why how I, I became interested in the environmental research mm. and in this air quality, because I think the environmental conditions are really, really important to determine good health or determine uh, disease. And in terms of air quality, and specifically in dairy farms, it's really important that we measure how these air quality metrics move across the day, across the different operations, so that we could create or estimate the standards of air quality so mm, we can okay. take a decision. That's why we are measuring air quality that's pretty good yeah so kind of on that i'm wondering um if you can expand a little bit on maybe just more detail on what you're hoping to discover right in your research and um yeah just kind of i guess just elaborate a little more on that yeah well first of all it would be to discover that if we are able to detect these air pollutants or, po mm -hmm. or potential air pollutants uh, using the technology that is available. So right now we have uh, a technology that combines many sensors into one platform that mm -hmm. lets air come inside and give some readings. Oh, so the cool. first, that's exciting. Yeah, the first uh, conclusions that we have uh, come up with is that 
we are able to measure some of those gases mm. in dairy farms. So, so you're are, you are collecting that data that you were looking for. Yes, well, that's yes. exciting. For example, at group scale, we are able to detect methane, ammonia, particulate matter, uh, BOC, which, which is uh, volatile organic compounds that oh. come from uh, combust combustion engines. Mm -hmm. uh, we are able to detect CO, CO2, uh, and some other chemicals and gases. So that's oh, wow. the first thing we have learned those gases are detectable. And then the second thing is that those gases move across the day or move according to what is going on mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the dairy. What would be an example of something that might impact the, the varying levels within the barn? Mm -hmm. For me, it was very interesting to see what happened uh, with ammonia levels mm -hmm. because, you know, in bed school, we are always taught that ammonia is bad and you can smell it and then irritates the lung. But there are not really defined thresholds about how much ammonia mm -hmm. should, should be in a barn. Sometimes mm, okay. we are taught like if you smell ammonia, something yeah. is bad. But uh -huh. probably that's not a good metric, you know, because it mm. could vary. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And when we had this sensors technology that are giving us reading minute by minute, we were able to calculate or accumulate this data hour by hour. So we saw, for example, at nighttime that the ammonia levels were kind of steady, mm -hmm. about, if I'm not wrong, like 10 ppm mm -hmm. uh, of concentration of ammonia. Mm -hmm. And then when the, the daylight came, the ammonia levels dropped. And that was, yeah, I, I put the same face. I was like, whoa. I sort of expected it to be opposite. Sure. I yes, kind of thought yeah. the animals would be sleeping and then get up and need to exactly. go to the restroom or whatever. Well, yeah. Is there something, because you're me measuring this in a, correct me if I'm wrong, in a cross-ventilated barn, yes. is there something related to yes. this as well or not? Yeah, in our case, it's a tunnel-ventilated barn. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, that's exactly what we think is happening. I because thought the same thing that JR thought about. Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. because around 6 a.m., you know, temperatures start to increase, uh -huh. and that activates the forced ventilation of the barn. So uh, ammonia is getting washed okay. out, and See. also it's when the first milking happens and the scraping tractors uh, are coming, you know, and mm -hmm. ammonia mm -hmm. levels are... are uh, that helps to decrease ammonia level. Which but on the mm -hmm. other hand that could also increase other air components, you know. Which is, is very interesting because uh, I was going to ask you what are the ways that, you mentioned the, the equipment that you were using, right? But are, are there other ways to measure that besides relying the human smelling? And if, if the concentrations are increasing at night, do you have people going there at the farm and checking how that is that smelling overnight? So, so like... You have yeah. any thoughts on that? Like, what are the ways to measure? Like, in a practical way, are there ways to measure that as mm -hmm. well? Yeah, and that's the technology we are currently using. It's uh, sensoring technology. There are, in these platforms, there are several types of sensors, from electrochemicals to electroacoustic sensors that I'm not quite sure how they work, mm -hmm. but they seem to be really precise. And kind of on the side, I would like to say that we are working on testing the accuracy of those sensors. Oh, cool. But all the data that we are generating is based on sensor technology. So it's, it's not a human nose, you yeah. know, uh, saying how much ammonia it is. Uh, but it's, it's something that is automatically uh, being recorded. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So then I have kind of a, another kind of follow-up question to the one I just asked. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about... You know, what are the, you know, the reasons or the potential impacts um, air quality can have on humans that are working on farms, but also animals that are in dairy barns? Just kind of the why behind, mm -hmm. behind your research. and Yeah, so there are many known air pollutants that can cause disease in humans, mm -hmm. especially chronic disease. Mm -hmm. But okay. most of the standards are estimated in outdoors environments. Mm -hmm. So there are not much indoors, specifically in dairy. Uh, and from the data we have been collecting, we have seen some of these gases being produced. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing about dairy. It's just we need to know how much of those mm -hmm. gases are being produced to see if we need to do something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's associated with specifically chronic disease. So, for example, if there is high levels of particulate matter, there are tiny particles that are able to go really deep into your lungs, mm -hmm. 
if you get exposed to that chronically, you can get lung disease or, or stuff stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or if we have workers that have some other uh, conditions, mm -hmm. health conditions that that may put those population in more risk to get to get th sick. Mm -hmm. And in in regards of animals, we of course are worried about ammonia levels that irritates okay. the airways. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping to associate our ammonia levels also with the production, for mm -hmm. example, to see if we could associate that and, and see when we we need to do something. Yeah, that's that's a very yeah. very good point. So just to clarify, so it sounds like, um, you know, dairy managers, um, dairy farmers are working to manage these gases, mm -hmm. but we're still looking to discover how much exactly. the concentrations are. So it's not that we aren't working to manage them, but yes. now we're just seeing if, if there's an opportunity to try a different <coughs> management strategy. Exactly. Okay. Yes. More targeted to these specific gases, especially... Now, if we are talking about methane, mm -hmm. you know, if we could kind of estimate the group scale emission of methane, mm -hmm. uh, like how how much methane is being produced in a barn, and then we that opens up the possibility to test, you know, diets that mm -hmm. are going to mm -hmm. affect the whole operation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's, that's but yeah, currently, you know, uh, environmental con control is not something new. There has been housing technology fan ventilated uh, barns, you know, mm -hmm. uh, curtains that are operating based on temperature. But now we know that there is more in there that could affect uh, yeah. animal health and productivity and human health too. Yeah, that's exciting I to to be discovering um, some is. opportunities there. Yeah. And I think understanding the impact of increasing these different gases or not in the, in the closed environment is, is really important. Well, you you mentioned like you you touched pretty briefly on this, uh, and we've mentioned that the the barn specifically that you're conducting a research right now it's across ventilated. That, that's how it's called. Yeah, tunnel. To be more specific, is a tunnel ventilated. Okay, yeah. so could these be considered management strategies to improve their quality in the, in a barn? Mm -hmm. And it does. For example. Coming back to the, our ammonia example, mm -hmm. ventilation that does improve uh, the levels of ammonia in, in the barn. But now we could use those thresholds to know how to use this fan more, you know, in a more efficient way and then connect it to other parts of sustainability. You know, when mm -hmm. these fans are really needed in terms of air quality and if we are strategic, strategic we may save energy or, or kind of those mm -hmm. uh, metrics. Interesting. And besides this, are there any other management strategies that the producer could do to improve air quality in the, in the closed barn? Yeah, well, um, pen cleaning is, is very important. Mm -hmm. um, manure scraping, you know, have a good schedule of cleaning uh, ma manure. It's, it's important. Uh, trying not to raise too much dust inside mm -hmm. of the barn is also, it's also important. And, and we have seen we had one student in that dairy observing what was happening in the in the in the barn, and for example, when animals got uh, fed, the the particulate matter, for example, increased, which makes sense because yeah. that mm -hmm. creates dust, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that we should avoid that, but mm -hmm. we should we if we know that we can think maybe workers need PPE when they are doing that, mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. we need to turn on the fans, you know. Yeah, kind of those those things. Because mm -hmm. I mean, it's inevitable we're going to feed dairy animals on dairies, right? So yeah. what? How do you how do you mitigate um, mm -hmm. potential impacts, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thinking yeah. about the cows and, and as well as the workers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's an interesting point about what the producers can do because we cannot force all producers to install a tunnel ventilated barn. So yeah. mm -hmm. that's where sure. we want to expand to other. A type of housing designs to see how air quality dynamics are in those kind of barns. What what kind of um, housing types are you looking at in terms of barn structure? Yeah, so with the or future future opportunities mm -hmm. for study. Yeah, we were very uh, fortunate to win a, a grant, and in that grant we're going to add another uh, housing system, which is a naturally ventilated barn, so oh, cool. without any venti ventilation at all, mm -hmm. and this is a robotic parlor. That only has some fans next to the 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 automatic units, 
okay. you know, but where the cows are, there's not ventilation at all. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So over there. So then you can kind of cross compare. So in this system, we looked at this and these are the concentrations looking in this system and exactly. these are the concentrations. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Well, yeah. and I think, um, I think you kind of, you know, nudge to this. We talk a lot about this and sustainability that all, you know, there's not a one size fits all. And mm-hmm. so it'll be really interesting to see what your data shows from those comparisons because regional variability, right. <laughs> and like you don't raise animals, um, you know, in, in Colorado the same way that you might, you know, in another, another place like exactly. Minnesota or something like that, yeah. different, different strategies there. Yeah. 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 As well as throughout the year. Right. And, if it's the winter is one thing, summer is mm-hmm. another Yeah, we're thing. hoping to, to be studying those two types of barns for a period of two years. So we hope to have that seasonal effects and how that correlates with uh, um, air quality inside. And you yeah. also have sensors at different places in the dairy, right? It's not only... Yes, that's yeah. a big question we hope to answer with this grant. It's also, we have this technology, we have these metrics, but we have to make sure that we are using it in the right way. That mm-hmm. That is like, what is the height we should install the sensors? Where in the barns? Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the range of, mm-hmm. you know, detection of the sensor? So we, we need to provide producer all, all of these answers so that they can do an informed investment decision. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And also... Uh, testing the accuracy of these sensors are, mm-hmm. is going to be a big part of this grant. Is this, um, it, it, well, it sounds like we're looking at accuracy of, of the measurement tool that you're using. So is this, can you talk to us a little bit about how this research is new and novel? And Because um, if we're also looking at the, if we're looking at the concentrations and the equipment, it must be fairly recent, yes? Yes, it is recent in that extent, because we are using this automatic technology, but we also want to make sure that this technology is doing what it's supposed to be mm-hmm, sure. doing. And another part that we want to test is, for example, how often this monitor should get service, for example. Mm-hmm. If if we install the sensor next to the manure collection area, they may be more exhausted with gases, so maybe those sensors... Mm-hmm. Um, should be replaced more often or serviced more often. So I think that's pretty new. And actually, we were discussing an air quality paper last week with our group. Mm. And that paper was like for 10 years ago, maybe. Yeah. And and then they were just doing a cross-sectional samples. It's like they went just one day, collected, collected samples in bags, and they took it to the, to the lab. But in our case, we are hoping to have constant readings of air quality yeah so i I think that's Mm -hmm. very new to the to the daily environmental research Mm -hmm. and it's gonna give us a few answers and a lot of questions (laughs) but it's exciting that's great that's good so yeah and how how do you see this research uh feeding on the broad sustainability uh mission vision that our team here at Agnex has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, sustainability, of course, is about mitigating the impacts of livestock. Mm-hmm. But we cannot mitigate what we cannot measure. That's so, point. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, f- here, this research has a big impact on that because we are going to be able to measure what's happening in the operation related to specific operations. And from there, try to do something if we need to do something. Mm-hmm. Uh, or interconnect, for example, air quality with the use of other resources, such as water. Mm-hmm. Because water, you know, we use water as a mister to, uh, you know, as a heat stress abatement system. Mm-hmm. But we know that the use of water increases the particulate matter. So the mm-hmm. the, the particulate tends to stay, stay longer in the air when the when there, there is more humidity. So maybe we could, if we know particulate matter in a, in a milking parlor, for example, we could strategically think about the use of mister, kind of come up with a balance mm-hmm. to, to fight his stress, but also not to increase particulate matter mm-hmm. too much, and then save water and keep cows healthier, mm-hmm. and workers too. So I think that's a, I think you did a really good job of um, kind of describing the opportunities for trade-offs in sustainability and what 
one measure, if you pull this lever, something over here happens, right? So if you stop, let's say you decide to stop misting animals and then you see heat stress increasing, yeah. but you see air quality balancing or going down or mm -hmm. whatever. So it's an interesting, um, it's always just something to think about is the trade-offs. Yeah. Sustainability is a very complex <laughs> space yes, to it be, is. but it's really motivating and exciting. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I feel like those were the majority of our questions, but I just want to give you a chance. Is there anything else that you would want to share with us about your research that we haven't already talked about that you want to make sure the listeners who selected this topic get a chance to hear from you? Well, I I would like to mention the the part of the accuracy like more in deep because it's really yeah. important mm -hmm. to me because we need to trust that the technology we are using is good. Mm -hmm. So in that extent, we are going to actually be collecting air samples with with bags and taking those samples to a, a lab and kind of comparing our readings with the lab results. That's and awesome. Yeah, so that hopefully we can provide good evidence for producers yeah. uh, so that they can trust and use the technology to, to have a healthier uh, their environment mm -hmm. and then yeah. use that to make informed decisions on their operation Absolutely. exactly yeah, yeah exactly uh, and there is another exciting thing yeah uh we are moving air quality projects to study the environments where calves daily heifer calves are raised oh cool so we are hoping to uh, study what's happening for example here in colorado it's very common that they are raising hutches mm -hmm. so what's happening inside in terms of uh air quality and respiratory disease mm -hmm. and also to see for example if we can do recommendations to to switch bedding for example based on air quality mm -hmm. so that is just using all this smart technology to to provide evidence and do more informed decisions mm -hmm. so that's that's going to be exciting oh that is exciting yeah, that is that's cool. awesome well yeah. thanks so much for joining us thank and you guys being here today. thanks for having me yeah it's awesome yeah. and thanks always to our listeners um appreciate you joining us for another episode of the ag next podcast um if anybody has questions about the topic today or anything at all um we hope that you'll send us an email um agnext at colostate.edu um, and also we have a bunch of resources on our website agnext.com colostate.edu. Um, encourage you to, to check those out. Um, and as always, uh, stay tuned and keep your eye on our social media um, for any future Listener Choice podcasts and also just good updates from us. So thanks for tuning in. Uh -huh.